Welcome to the latest addition to the Compliance Podcast Network, the podcast 10 for 10, which brings you the week's top 10 compliance stories curated together in one podcast each week. Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, brings you the compliance professional stories you need to be aware of at the end of your busy week. Sit back and in 10 minutes, hear about the stories every compliance professional should be aware of. Every Saturday, 10 for 10 highlights the most important news, insights, and analysis for the compliance professional, all curated by the voice of compliance, Tom Fox. Get your weekly filling of compliance stories with 10 for 10. Hosted by Tom Fox. 10 for 10 is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from the sponsor of the Compliance Podcast Network for this month, Ethico. In the intricate world of ethics and compliance, each second is precious, and slow case closures are more than just delays, they're missed opportunities. Enter Ethico. Our solution revolutionizes case management, cutting closure times in half and turning every challenge into a chance for improvement. Imagine a workspace where efficiency and compliance coexist harmoniously. Don't just dream of faster resolutions, make it your reality. Visit ethico.com slash CPN today to book a demo and dive into our exclusive white paper by Tom Fox, the ROI of compliance, and to try our free ROI calculator. Empower your team with the tools they deserve. Welcome to 10 for 10 for the week ending August 4, 2024. First up, uh, the first of a couple of stories from the Financial Times. And this one, the EU corruption probe targets the Chinese LNG project in Cyprus. I've been saying for years about the corruption involved in the Chinese Belts and Roads project. Well, the EU is seeking to claw back up to $100 million um, after a Chinese-led consortium abandoned a gas import terminal project it's being investigated for corruption. Uh, Cyprus, Cyprus was awarded a huge um, amount of money from the EU. And, of course, the Chinese, uh, after they milked Cyprus for all they could, abandoned the project. So corruption in belts and roads. I'm shocked. Next up, um, in a really interesting article from Business Insider, uh, it lists the 10 most corrupt public officials in Nigeria. And what are those 10? Well, number one, prosecutor. Number two, land registry officers. Number three, judges. Number four, customs and immigration officials. Number five, embassy consulate officers. Number six, members of parliament. Number seven, police officers. Number eight, vehicle inspection officers. Number nine, federal road safety corp. And 10, tax and revenue officers. So um, if you're in Nigeria, now you know the top 10 list of most corrupt. Uh, Our second story from the Financial Times reports on the serious fraud office has charged Glencore's former head of oil trading over corrupt payments. Uh, He is a billionaire and he and four other former executives were charged with conspiring to make corrupt payments in a long-running investigation into bribery allegations of the UK listed commodity trader in Africa. Uh, the uh, Alex Beard uh, headed Glencore's oil division bef- between 2007 and 2019. He was charged along with Andrew Gibson, Paul Hopkirk, Ramon Lavaggia, and Martin Wakefield in relation to oil contracts awarded in Glencore's interest. The defendants have to uh, appear in court on September 10th. The SFO first opened the investigation in 2019. And these are the first individual charges brought. The great state of Texas has settled a a massive claim with Meta for $1.4 billion that Meta wrongfully used facial recognition technology on users' posts without their permission. Um, This personal biometric data was deemed confidential and Meta was punished for it. Next up from Reuters, uh, First Energy who, having settled um, its massive corruption scandal in uh, Ohio, is fighting tooth and nail against a shareholder action, claiming that it was engaged in primary corruption. 
But now the underlying investigative reports have been deemed as not privileged and will go to the plaintiffs. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Next, we have the first of two articles from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, This one is in the law section by Dave Michaels, which asks the questions if a felony is a felony conviction for a big company, merely a footnote. Uh, And of course, it's around Boeing and their um, criminal plea that they have agreed to with the Department of Justice following the DOJ's uh, determination that Boeing had violated the DPA. This all started with the two 737 MAX crashes, and um, it's going to be interesting to see if being branded a felon pursuant to a plea does anything to the company. Uh, Boeing's done a spectacular job of trashing its own reputation, but of course the victims of the families have uh, objected to this resolution as uh, not even a slap on the wrist of Boeing. Is Boeing too big to be disbarred? Probably But should they pay a greater penalty? Well, certainly the victims' families think so. Our second story from the Wall Street Journal comes to us from the Risk and Compliance Journal, Mingi Sun reporting that State Street Financial has agreed to pay up $7.5 million to settle allegations a subsidiary of the financial services firm received payments and redacted invoices from two Russian entities that faced U.S. sanction restrictions. The subsidiary, Charles River Development, a financial technology company specializing in software for communications trading information, allegedly altered the dates and reissued the invoices and accepted contractual payments from the two majority-owned Russian banks between 2016 and 2020. Obviously, when you um, alter dates and reissue invoices, it is never a good thing. Uh, from Barron's, it uh, looks like Mozambique finally gets some good news when it comes to the tuna fleet case, or what Barron's calls the hidden debt case, where a British judge ordered a Lebanon, Lebanese-based shipbuilder, Prinvenvinst, sorry I butchered that, to pay several hundred million dollars to Mozambique based upon the secret services uh, that were... Uh, charged to Mozambique by the company for the building of the fugitive tuna fleet. Uh, Next up, I know you're shocked to hear that the Ohio Capital Journal is reporting that Donald Trump's top campaign money bundler is connected to yet another scandal. Yes, he was a part of First Energy and he got $68 million uh, from that uh, entity. Uh, So the corruption around the Trump campaign obviously continues. If he becomes president again, it's going to be Katie bar the door, and there'll never be corruption again. And our final story comes to us from Bloomberg, which reports that uh, RTX, the corporation formerly known as Raytheon, has set aside a combined $959 million as part of a deal with the U.S. government to sell criminal investigations into pricing for missile and defense services, as well as uh, bribery allegations under the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Obviously, we are on this podcast are much more concerned about the FCPA, and they've uh, reserved $384 million for the corruption matter. The DOJ began looking into uh, Raytheon in 2017 around the FCPA violations, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, the details of that as they come out. But when a company reserves for a settlement with the Department of Justice, and they reserve a specific amount. It's generally a pretty good sign that uh, a settlement is coming quickly. Thanks for listening to this episode, and I hope you have a great weekend and that you'll join me again next Saturday for 10 for 10. 10 for 10 is a production of the award-winning Compliance Podcast Network. Have you ever wondered how to show the ROI of your compliance program? Have you struggled with the budgeting process, getting the funds you want for your compliance program? Well, I've partnered with Ethico to put together a white paper on the ROI of compliance, which shows you not only how to demonstrate ROI, but also how to speak finance when you're sitting across from the CFO with your budget proposals. Check out the website and get the white paper. 
Thanks so much for listening to this episode of 10 for 10. I hope you'll check out the newest podcast in the Compliance Podcast Network, the Compliance Tip of the Day. In Compliance Tip of the Day, I give a five to eight minute summary of one tip that you can uh, integrate into your compliance program or put together for greater compliance program efficiency.